everybody, it's Cass Kim. I'm here to talk to you today about plot structure. So um, as you know, I do polls on Twitter. So if you want to have a say in what type of videos I talk about next, uh, just go ahead and follow me on Twitter and vote on my polls. Uh, so plot structure is what won for this video. So we're going to talk about five basic things about plot structure, and then I'll add a couple personal tips in there as well. So number one, the first thing you need to do is you need to establish normal. So you have to establish normal in a way that makes us grab onto the characters or grab onto the environment, something that's gonna really get your reader involved. But you need to do it, you can't just pop in with the inciting incident most of the time. Um, you know, sometimes you can do like a structure with a thriller or something where you have like the murder and then you flash back or you come forward into the main character's life, but the main character isn't typically in the middle of like running for their lives or like, um, in the middle of being asked by the police to help with this murder investigation. Usually they're going about their day first, right? So you grab the reader and you establish normal. And when you're establishing normal, you can world build, develop your character, get some relationships in there. And then after that, then you have your inciting incident. So the second step in plotting is an inciting incident. This is when we kind of find out what's going to be the, the, the big conflict in the story, right? So in a lot of fantasy stories, it's like, oh, this is the only person who can do this. Or um, maybe the person who's trying to solve the mystery in the thriller gets a threatening note or something where they're like, okay, now I'm involved, right? Um, so it could be kind of anything. Um, for Wilders, the inciting incident happens, I think, around chapter four. Five, so I don't want to spoil it because it's kind of a big thing in the story, but um, chapter five is what I would consider to be the inciting incident in Wilders uh, when kind of the whole world gets flipped on its head. Um, so number three, after your inciting incident, if you do the triangle, I have um, these printouts for free printouts on my website for kind of writing out this plot if you'd like to do that. So you have your um, establishing normal, inciting incident, and then your triangle starts going up. And this is all rising action. So number three is going to be raising the stakes. So you've got your normal, you've got your inciting incident, and now you have to raise the stakes in the world, in the character, um, so that your audience starts to get like more invested and they really see what's going on, right? Um, when you're raising the stakes, this is a good time as well to introduce any subplots that you're going to have, um, any secondary character arcs that you might have going on. This is where you want to establish those kind of things. Um, when you're rising the action, this is where like more things pile up, could be where traveling happens, if they have to go to different places, where more clues get given out, if it's like a mystery. Uh, so this is really the meat of the, the story up until you have um, our fourth plot point, which is the tip of the triangle, the climax of your story, or the big turning point or decision. So you have your small turning point um, for your character at your inciting incident. You have all these stakes that get built up so that now we're on our edge of our seat like what are they going to do what are they going to choose how are they going to figure this out and that's when you have your climatic moment that tip of the triangle where they make a big decision are they going to go for it are they going to run away and hide are they going to go in and be that leader and then we have to see what happens when they choose to do that right so you have your climax like if we're doing the fantasy trope of like the chosen one, so they, they have their normal life, maybe something's going on in their normal village, like a, I think it's like Robert Jordan or something in the Wheel of Time where they're having like a festival, right? And then the inciting incident happens where everything just like goes crazy and the character finds out that like his world is not what he thought it was, it's not as safe as he thought it was, right? And then all of this stuff happens where he's on this journey and then, oh, you have to make a decision. Are you gonna fight for this or not? So once the character decides, and usually it's probably like a, yeah, I'm going to do it, right? Once they decide that they're going to do it, then you have your resolution, your falling action sort of stuff. Um, so that's the downside of the triangle if you're using the worksheets. And this is where we see what happens. So yeah, I'm going to fight. I have to build an army. I have to decide who I trust. I have to get in the right spot. All of these other side characters' plots have to start to come together as well during this time. And then you have... After your big decision, then you have all of this stuff that happens where you get to like that big battle or that big moment. 
and that's actually in the falling part of the triangle. I know a lot of times it feels like it should be the point, right? Because it's the most exciting part of the story. This is like the big action scene, but it's actually the falling action where that happens. And then, so it's because it's all the fallout of the decision, right? And then you have your big exciting moment happens and then you get your resolution. So then you get to either establish what might be the question for the second book or what they have to go through in the second book or the next book. Or if it's a standalone book, you can just completely wrap up your story there if you're gonna have like a tied up ending. Um, so those are the five main things. So you gotta have established normal, you gotta have inciting incident, you have to have your rising action, raising the stakes, you've gotta have your climatic decision-making moment, and then you have all of the fallout from that moment. And that's when it's really exciting. That should be the part where people are like brr, 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 reading through the pages like, oh my gosh, what's happening? What's happening? What's happening? Oh my gosh, I'm so invested in these characters because I know all these stakes now. I saw them make this big life altering decision and now I got to see what happens. And then you get to kind of like, oh, the big moment happened and now we're just going to kind of calmly wrap it up or maybe we'll ramp it up just a little bit more because everybody's happy, they're having a great time and then this note gets delivered or, you know, however you want to do it. Um, so those are kind of the basics for plot structure as far as I write. Um, I know there's a lot of different ways to do plot. There's like save the cat and there's like um, all these different stepped plot methods as well. I like to use a more broad plot method because it gives a lot more room for discovery. And I'm a bit of a plantster, I guess you could say. I usually start out pantsing and then I draw my triangle and plot out some things, some points in it. But I don't break it down scene by scene, moment by moment, chapter by chapter, because I like to find moments with my characters. I like to give them that wiggle room. So my first big tip for plotting is to be okay with changing the plot. So even if you're somebody who writes it all out, like save the cat style, and you've got it step by step, it's okay to change, it's okay to add scenes in, to delete things that aren't working. Your plot never has to be iron clad, set in stone. It's not a contract that you signed with your characters. You can change it if you need to. And I think part of being a good editor when you're writing is that willingness to let go of some of your favorite scenes or to add in things even when you're like, oh my gosh, I thought I was done writing, right? You have to be able to to pick and choose and to make that plot full and exciting and interesting. And you don't have to have a lot of side plots either. It depends on how you wanna structure your novel, but you can have just like one big main plot. It doesn't have to have like a bunch of intricate side plots going on. If that's not your style, that's okay. Um, so then one of the things that somebody brought up on Twitter um, was how do you get from point A to point B? So maybe you've got your you know, inciting incident established and then you've got your big decision climactic moment established. But what goes in all of this wall part of the triangle, right? What, how do you get from point A to point B? So you can do this in a lot of different ways, but I think this is where having really good side characters can come in handy because you can use dialogue and moments with those characters to raise the stakes a little bit. You know, it could be something as mundane as like taking a trip to a store or um, one of the side characters drags the main character into a tavern for their first beer. And then when that main character is drunk, then they like divulge all of these weights that are on their chest about this or like you learn something about their past that really makes this next coming decision that they have to make like that much more weighty. There's a lot of different ways to kind of get that rising action and building the stakes. And it really depends on the genre that you're writing in. Um, but I would say this is where having like those really good side characters can help you really establish that. The other thing is that if your characters are moving around in the world, that gives you ways to build the stakes as well within those moments because you can have a lot of interaction when people are learning new places or when they're traveling. Um, so then one of the other things that I like to do when I am plotting if I get stuck is I might write out like a small little scenelet and just kind of chapter like bullet point the chapter how it might look and what the point of it might be so like maybe I have a character who needs to have a fight with their parent I don't know I write a lot of young adult maybe I have a character that needs to have a fight with their parent and I just don't know how they're going to have that fight so I might write out two or three different reasons that they might have the fight and then kind of bullet point how the fallout might look because some, sometimes you can write your characters into corners where you're going to end up making them do something that doesn't really fit the character just to fit your plot. And I don't, I don't think that serves the plot well because most of the time if you've established your characters really strong and your readers are really into them, 
they're going to notice when something like that happens and they're going to be like, ugh, kind of lose a little bit of that investment into the storyline because it's going to feel like you've intentionally wedged that character into that spot. So that's why I like to make like a couple choices sometimes if I'm stuck and it's not flowing right. Um, so if you've read the Wilder series, um, this will not be a spoiler if you haven't, don't worry. But if you've read the Wilder series, I feel comfortable telling you that my initial idea for that was to have this really big climactic moment where like they had to shut down the power source of the town to get things under control. And it had to be just like two or three of the main characters and they had to escape and do this in this really wild, really crazy environment. And it was going to be like a big explosion and like this huge thing. And it just didn't feel right for the characters. Like I started to write it and I was like, no, there's no way Sid would agree to this. Like it's bad enough that she agreed to what she ended up agreeing to in the book. Um, you know, but there's just like, there, and there is no way that Rena would take the risk that she took um, when I first started to write that big climactic scene because it just doesn't fit with her character. She's just much more careful and much more timid. Um, you know, it's not like she could just all of a sudden do this brave, adventurous thing. So that's why I think it helps sometimes if you're stuck to write two different, you don't have to write the whole scene even. You could just write one or two lines of key dialogue, like one person convincing the other, or even just bullet points of like, okay, so this is what it would look like. This person would suggest it. This person would agree. This is how they would go about it. This would be the fallout, right? You don't have to do a whole writing of a scene if you don't have the time or you don't feel like it you can just do bullet points. So that's what my biggest recommendation is if you're stuck on your plot is first draw it out. And then if you're stuck getting from point A to point B or something isn't feeling right, consider alternate solutions. Never be afraid to change. Okay, so those are my tips for plotting. I'm gonna try to do a little bit of a series where I get a little bit more in depth on some of the key aspects of plotting, like foreshadowing, Tara. <laughs> um, cause I just said that because she asked me on Twitter. Um, or some other things that are kind of uh, important ways to like flow, like pacing kind of stuff for stories. I'm going to try to dig into the nitty gritty of things. This is kind of just a general idea for plot structure. And again, there are free printables on my website if you'd like to utilize them. I have ones for timelines, ones for drawing out the plot map where it's already drawn out with little key information on the bottom. Um, I have character sheets, so feel free to hop on over to castkim.castkim.com. Totally free to download. Use them all you want. Um, I just made them because I think that they're helpful. Okay, everybody have a great start to your week, and I will try to put out two more videos this week. Okay. Oh my gosh. And Autumn Nights goes live at the end of this week. I'm so excited, you guys. Okay. All right. Watch the book trailer if you haven't yet. I put it up on my channel. All right.